Hello, this is Francis from McCaffrey's Crafts and today we're out uh, doing some blackthorn hunting. Okay, well, this is what we would call an Irish boreen. And a boreen is like a, a little road that you go down. Uh, so usually like you won't find the best blackthorn. There's actually no blackthorn here, but I just thought I'd give you guys a glimpse of uh, one of these little boreens that, that I walk down and uh, as I'm going on my journey to kind of look for, for a blackthorn. Uh, I don't have one of those kind of gimbal things, so I'm just holding the phone in my hand. So if it comes off as a, a bit shaky, uh, sure, sure, let me know anyway. I have to probably walk down here for about five, ten minutes just to, to kind of uh, have a look for, for some blackthorn. Uh, but I just thought I knew I'd kind of bring you guys along with, with this kind of trip today, uh, you know, and just kind of take little, little glimpses of uh, my journey. So, you know, you'll see me. Kind of walking down one of these places with with a little little saw in my hand. That's kind of what I'm up to. Just kind of on my my kind of uh, hunt, January hunt for for some black thorn. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna continue on now for a little bit, and I'll I'll make a next clip now in a second. Okay, I don't know if you can see it there, guys, but uh, that would be would be a black thorn. Uh, this one's actually you see this kind of black thorn bush here. Uh, this one's actually growing. By the side of the road which isn't too bad because you see look I can just stand here and kind of cut away uh, like there'd be a few kind of nice sticks there now to get uh, but I might walk on a bit further here because uh, you know we're kind of at the side of the road here don't want uh, to be bothering too many people oh there you have it so I just want to kind of like show you there so there's a kind of nice little little bit of black thorn that uh, I might have a look at on my on my way back uh, but again, there's there's really nothing nothing too much else around here. There's nothing 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 nothing, and then oh, finally, uh, some some black thorn there is growing, which is uh, which is quite good to see. Okay, guys, here you have quite a lot of black thorn, but uh, this one has been kind of trimmed and pruned away. It's probably uh, not quite suitable yet. Like you know, the the branches are are quite small there and thin. Uh, bit of a thick one in there but not really a walking stick so uh, you know here's a kind of patch you'd kind of say right give it another one or two years and uh, maybe you know one or two more years time there might be some some sticks here but you see that one there like you can't really make a walking stick with that it's not really that good there's no real handle on it as well so you kind of have to look for pieces of black thorn that you can actually carve a handle on as well because uh, you know when you see pieces like that it's just really kind of no good uh, you'd want to try to find something you can make some kind of handle with. Maybe there's one or two in there. I might look at in a moment. Okay, here, you go. here guys. Here's the uh, here's the two tools I mainly use. Just that kind of clipper and just any kind of saw will do. And uh, <coughs> here's the first one I've cut today. That will make quite a nice stick, or there's, there's a nice nice handle as well on this uh, on this black thorn. It's uh, kind of a good thick, heavy stick. Uh, here's what it looks like the wood. You see the, the, the tight green there on the black thorn? So it's a dense, heavy wood. Here's kind of what the, the bark looks like up close in the winter time. You can sand that down to get like a purple, purplish hue and things like that. Uh, so yeah, there you, you have it. Uh, the first uh, first stick I've cut today is just kind of on my own today. So I just kind of have to hold the camera in one hand and show you guys. So it's very hard to show you me cutting, but it's not hard. Look, you just get a saw cut here, cut here. And then just kind of cut a bit of length at the bottom to uh, in case there's going to be any cracking along the way and then when you get home you want to be sealing the freshly cut wood to prevent any kind of cracking but if it goes crack it'll probably crack to about maybe here or something like that so the integrity of the main part of the handle will be okay for a good knob stick uh, so yeah it's the first one I've cut today well here's something you don't see every day uh, and uh, I'll explain it now on a reason. Uh, this is actually a black thorn, but look look at how thick it is. Um, this is a black thorn that has been growing for a long, long, long time. It goes right, right up there. Uh, this this black thorn would be pretty old because it's rare enough that you get a black thorn that, that's that thick. That's what, maybe 10 inches across. So, uh, you know, maybe you can get a nice, nice cudgel with a big knob stick out of that. But when the black thorn wood is um, is this thick, if you bring that home to season, it's going to crack. Um, when it gets really big and thick, it's uh, it's kind of impossible to uh, to season it without it cracking. So um, even though it looks quite impressive, 
these really big thick pieces they're not really too good and also a piece like this would take whew, five plus years to, to season uh, which would be quite quite a lot so uh, it's just kind of rare that you actually see a black thorn that has you know this one is, is decades and decades old this is quite quite a quite an old black thorn because usually they start as a bush and grow but if they're left to kind of grow and grow and grow they can look you know look how big that is compared to to my hand that's that's like huge like and uh, it goes up there but even though it looks like impressive i'm not really seeing any good type of walking sticks and like is it worth cutting down so i mean is it is it worth um cutting down the whole tree just to get one cudgel out of it probably not be a lot of work for a little return on that but i just thought i'd show you guys today because that was quite quite interesting to see when you're out and about okay guys that's enough cutting for today it's a tough enough day here's uh today's kind of amount of ones i got uh that's going to make a quite quite a good knob stick this one too you have a little eye shape there it's a good inch and a half thick that's probably an inch and a inch and a quarter thick as well you have all these little vines growing all over it as well but how many did i get today one two three four five six seven so seven six uh not a bad mad day uh that's a root ball that i dug out took a while to kind of dig out but there you can see what's what the the root of a black thorn looks like as well and uh now i just have to see i think i have a few little little thorns in my hand i'll wait till a few more hours what will happen is like a little red kind of uh, ring will kind of start coming around where where i've got stuck by the black thorn and then i'll be out with my tweezers but uh there you have it just wanted to kind of show you just today uh a bit worn out now time for a cup of tea uh they're about seven sticks so if i manage to get seven sticks every time i go for a walk uh if i can get about 50 a week for the next you know 12 weeks i'll be happy i think that's my my target anyway but uh you know with all these restrictions and stuff i'm kind of limited to the areas that i can kind of go cutting in so uh uh this is the best i can do which uh a bit bit more hard work so i think there'll be a blood tax on the sticks from two years from now so two years from now i might add an extra fiver on to the cost of these sticks given how hard they were to uh to get compared to, to other year's sticks but uh you know so what's it now 2021 so 2023 will be the year of the blood tax <laughs> i think i've talked about that in other other videos as well as where if a stick has caused me great ache heartache pain and and been very difficult to get sometimes i'll just throw on an extra few uh, usually about an extra five or ten ten euro onto the cost of the stick just to compensate me for uh for, for the trouble the, the stick has cost me. Uh, so there you have it, it's time for a cup of tea now. All right guys, every one of these uh, cutting videos, I think I'll end with, with a cup of tea each day. So, uh, you know, time to, to have a nice warm of, of, uh, of tea. And uh, I'm in no way affiliated to Barry's, but uh, you know, if you want Irish tea, it's gotta be a cup of Barry's. And the way I like my tea, just in my teapot here, uh, I just put a little, everyone has their own special way of, of making a cup of tea. For me, uh, no, no sugar and just a tiny, tiny little drop of milk, just enough to kind of change the color, just like a few, few drops of milk. Some people like a lot of milk, some people like sugar, some people like strong tea where they put the tea bag in for a long time, some just dip it in. I'm kind of in the middle, like between strong, strong and weak, just, just enough. And then you have to wait for the temperature to be just right before, before you drink it. But, uh, so that's my, my tea drinking ritual. And, you know, if you're Irish, you need uh, biscuits with your cup of tea. And uh, again, if you're, if you're Irish, you'll, you'll know about the, the tin of biscuits you get at Christmas time. They're always left over in January. These, these tins of biscuits that your aunt would give you or some cousin or something like that. For some reason, they always buy you tins of biscuits as, as presents. So uh, here's a classic brand. Well, I'll just turn the camera around for a second. Here's one of these kind of typical uh, Irish uh, tins of biscuits that you get at Christmas time, loads of them. So uh, this one is USA by Jacobs, uh, <laughs> 1851. We'll see about that. So, so you've got your plenty, plenty kind of art type of biscuits. Let's see what's left over here. So you can see that the good ones will always start to go first, like, you know, these guys. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if you're Irish, you'll know what these are. It's custard cream biscuits. Very good for a cup of tea. They're pretty good. Or uh, actually these ones too. Bourbon creams, you know. They're, they're a good kind of Irish biscuit. And again, you know me guys, I like to dunk them in here. 
and uh, and eat them. So, oh yeah, I gotta stop you now eating when I'm trying to speak and make a video. So, um, yeah, that's like your your tin of biscuits, and I thought it'd be a nice uh, a nice way to kind of end the day, just to have a uh, you know just kind of my random thoughts as a, as I, I drink some tea. Okay, guys, I know this is a mid long video today, but why not? This is my day, so you can see it. So. See, this morning I woke up and uh, I checked my messages as you do and I noticed I was tagged on, on Facebook. And uh, usually if someone's tagging me, it's like they want to show me something interesting or, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, this I got this stick from, from Francis and, uh, you know, it's a nice stick and stuff like that. Well, today this, this, uh, this gentleman uh, tagged me and I know he didn't really mean it, but it's just like th this is the problem with social media as well. He just kind of like worded something in a way which kind of, I kind of, you know, it made me look maybe in a negative light. So I had to go in and defend myself. And, uh, you know, then he messaged me and, you know, we, we he apologized and we worked it out and we had a chat and, and it's fine. As you do, like, you know, between men, that's that's how men are, you know, like, and that's that's uh, one of the problems like on social, social media, like uh, he was comparing my walking sticks to this uh, two piece stick with an attached head which wasn't blacktorn and he was saying that it was much nicer than any of the sticks that that i have and uh you know if, uh, if anyone who's bought my sticks know I, that uh, i make some some good sticks too and i think all people who make blacktorn walking sticks make good sticks uh i you know like to, to you know I, I talk regularly to to other blacktorn stick makers as well uh, and as i said it might surprise you i don't see like i'm not competing with them if you make a nice stick it sells there's no magic to, to the stick making business. If you make a nice stick and put it out there, someone will see it. That looks nice. They buy it. Uh, you know, so it's all about, you know, finding the, the good sticks. And if you find the good sticks, you don't have to worry about competitors or someone selling cheaper or more expensive than you. Like, like when you buy a nice stick, it sells. You know, like uh, you don't worry about what other people are doing. You just do your own thing. Put it out there. If it sells, you know. It, it, it does well. Like if you have loads of nice sticks and they're not selling, then you ask a question like, oh, are people seeing it or am I too expensive or what's going on? Then you can kind of look at it. But so I kind of jumped right in there and he just caught me like at a moment that I had a good, good rant. I, I gave him a good, good rant and saying, you know, how my sticks are not this and this and this and this. And I gave him like a breakdown of like the difference between this type of stick crafting and this type of stick crafting and, and different things like that. But uh you know, it was all like, you know, with with me when I when I kind of uh, go on to social media, it's usually I'm just kind of like checking a message or, or just kind of responding. But um, I'll always like kind of defend my craft and defend the craft of stick making. It's something that I'm, I'm passionate about. Like I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't like doing it. Um, so, you know, like uh, that's how I began my day today and uh, then trying to do some packing and you know take care of the three kids with their online schooling. I have my oldest trying to get her to do it and the two youngest, I just can't you know, uh, crack the whip hard enough for those guys to, to get them to study. They're just, they're too crafty for me, like, and uh, yeah, and then the weather wasn't too bad. So I thought I'd go out and do do a bit of cutting. And, um, you know, that this, that's what this video was about today. It was all about cutting, like, uh, just to kind of show you just, you know, like walk for a walk, try to find a few sticks, um, you know, like you'll find one here, one there. You just do a lot of walking around. It's not like you find one area and there's like, you know, 20 sticks all in one one bush. You just have to kind of go around and, and, and look around and different things like that. Um, so yeah, like this is kind of what January, February is like part of my routine. I'll kind of like wake up in the morning, deal the messages and um, try to make it some kind of YouTube if I have it. Um, deal with the couriers and the packing and all that stuff in the morning. In the afternoon, maybe try to, to get out, do some cutting. Then after that, try to maybe try to carve some handles, finish off some sticks. Uh, then after that, feed the kids in the evening then after that in the late evening uh, straightening sticks and uh you know i'll you know you might not believe me or not but i'm i'm up till 12 and 1 most night like doing uh doing work so and i work um, pretty much seven days a week and um, that's the kind of life of uh you know a self-employed uh, stick maker in, in 2021 you have to manage the uh the, the family life and the uh the stick making as well so that's kind of how i like usually would structure my day um you know and my you know I, I take a break like around midday maybe in the early afternoon check on the kids make sure it's some food and different things like that and i kind of have to be nearby the house and the kids just to keep checking in on them you know when my my oldest daughter she can mind the youngest when when i'm working so you have to kind of uh, adapt 
um, to it. And I'm sure it's, it's difficult for everyone out there trying to, to change and to, to work around all these kind of strange things. But if you are able to work, you know, that's that's good. There's many people that aren't and are just stuck at home. They don't know what to do through no fault of their own as well. And, you know, genuinely, my heart goes out to, to, to people like that. But, you know, um, all you can all you can do right at the moment is just focus on yourself on your friends and, and people around you. And um, if you can work, just keep working, just keep focused and um, keep saving too. save your money, uh, save up and, uh, you know, buy one of my sticks if you if you could afford it. And uh, if you can't just, you know, save a little bit until you can, because, uh, you know, at the end of the game, the day that is like I want to, you know, make sure that that I can have a living. This craft can survive. And, uh, you know, whatever happens in 2021, we're we're. Uh, with what do they say? We're all in this together. I think I think that's the worst motto ever. Like you, I've I've heard it too much last year. Pull together. We're all in this together. This together. We have two more weeks of lockdowns. Well, maybe one more month. Well, maybe two more months. Well, we're all in this together. I think that was the kind of uh, message of last year. I think this year is more uh, not we're all in it together, but just you know focus on the individual yourself and those around you, and uh, you know. That's that's you know you are the, the the master of your own destiny they say so anyway look I'm waffling on again there's my day long video of the day in the life of uh, I'll probably end it now because the rest of it is just me straightening sticks after I feed the kids and that's that's not really too exciting me just standing over a stick waiting for it to be warm enough that I can bend it and you know they're they're not the most interesting videos to make so thanks for watching anyway bye bye for today. Bye-bye.